Hi, this is Cherie with Rehash Fiber. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a weft float in rigid heddle weaving. Rigid heddle loom weaving is a lot of fun. The projects go quickly, you feel like you really accomplished something. So I've had the goal lately to use a yarn that has been around the studio. So I'm going to the rigid huddle loom a lot for projects so that I can do that. And what I'm doing is I used a couple of blues. One was alpaca and the other is cotton. So I'm being very careful with the alpaca. And I just want you to know this if you don't already know this little tip. If you have a fragile yarn that is in your warp, do not take the heddle and bring it down and tamp on it. Use your handy dandy cheap little plastic hair pick from whatever cheap store you'd buy it from and just work your weft in like this. It saves all the wear and tear on this yarn. So that's one tip. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to do the weft float. And what it's doing for me is I have this really nice yarn that is colorful. It's not being seen if I just do the regular rigid heddle loom weave back and forth. It's not being seen by these dominant colors that are also a little bit thicker than it. What I'm doing is a weft float so you see more of the weft yarn. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. I want my project to have something interesting in it, which would be the weft float, but I still need the project to keep moving rather quickly. So I'm doing the weft float every 10 rows. Now what you will need for the weft float is you will need a pickup stick, which I am just using another shuttle and some cardboard. The first thing you do is you need to get your shuttle in the position where you have your yarn that is going through the eyelets. It will only work if you're doing it with the ones that go through the eyelets. Now, I loaded my loom. I need to have mine in the up position to where the yarn through the slots is up. Take your cardboard stick and this is just so you can differentiate between the yarn in your shed. I just leave it right there. It helps give you a perspective. All right, take up the pickup stick and I'm gonna do two at a time. So I'm gonna go under two, over two, under two, over two. You get the idea. I'm gonna go all the way across like this. Now, once the pickup stick, or you can call it the pattern stick, is set up, you're going to take your shuttle to the neutral position. You're gonna rotate your pickup stick to the vertical position so you create a new shed and bring it up behind the shuttle. Now the shed is ever so slight. I can see on this side very clearly, this side, just so slight, but I just reference these in the back and I can see it in the front. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through this new created shed, which creates a pattern. Like I said, with all these strands, if you get confused, just reference the ones that are up in the back. And those are the ones you wanna go under. I pull it through ever so lightly. I don't give it a tug because I don't want to draw the sides in too much, even though they end up getting pulled in a little bit anyway. Now you have your weft float and you can see these little floats over the yarn. Now we're gonna just carry on with nine more regular rows. So what you do with these, is you lay that back down flat, move them both all the way to the, to the back. Once they're in the back, they won't affect your weaving and you can go back to weaving like normal. And off we go for nine regular rows. 
I've completed nine rows of regular weaving. Now I want to do another weft float. So I have my shuttle in the position to where the yarn is coming through the eyelets. Because this is still in the same place it was last time, it gives me an indication of what I want to do next because I want to alternate my floats so that there's a little bit of variety in my scarf. Rather than all the floats being in a line, I want them to be off from each other every other time. So I see that I've gone under these first two. Now in this round, I'm going to go over the first two and under the second two and so on and so forth. Bring your shuttle to the neutral position. Bring your pickup stick vertically. And now you're ready to go through. Now the one thing I have to do is catch this end so it's not left out. So I'm going to wrap around it once. And then I'm going to carry on with going under, going through the shed that I created. And there we have the alternating floats. I want to show you a great way to load the shuttle where you can hold a whole lot more yarn on it and it's not thicker. It just gets a little bit wider. Viewer Jane Smith messaged me and told me about it. She said, why don't you try the figure eight loading the shuttle? You can get more on. And when I did it, it was like an aha moment. So what you want to do is when you're loading it, just keep going from the back to the front. And what it does is it creates the figure eight over here. Just remember back to front. Then when this side gets really full, I just flip it over and do back to front on this side and load it all up. And she was right. It holds a whole lot more yarn, yet doesn't get thicker, just a little wider. And here we have the finished project. You see how the weft float just makes it a little more interesting and you can see that weft yarn better just adds fun to the projects. All right, everybody, happy weaving and thanks for watching.